Hello everybody, now it's a beautiful morning and a cloudy day in London as it is, but St. James Park is, as always, at its best. St. James Park is one of the wonders of central London. It has Buckingham Place in it, you can see London Eye from here, and it's located in the very heart of the city. Uh, so today we're going to talk about 12 secrets of St. James Park. Let's start. What's in the name? Rather than being named after a king or something as grand, the park is named after an hospital which stands nearly around St. James Palace as well. And the St. James Hospital, the Lipo Hospital, was named after James the Less. The disappearing lake. So the lake is now was one of the most prominent features of the park, but for six years last century, the lake didn't exist. In the First World War, it was drained in 1916 to allow the government to build new places for itself and then it was refilled with water at 1922. Deer breeding. So Henry VIII was a huge fan of hunting deers and he generally used Hyde Park or Regent's Park for his hunting because St. James Park wasn't big enough for his needs. So what he did, he made this place as a breeding for deers so when they were big enough, they would be taken to Hyde Park or Regent's Park to face their fate. The pelicans. So everybody knows the St. James Park is famous with the pelicans, but where did they come from? So they were a gift from a Russian ambassador given to King Charles II at 1664 as a gift, because like, what would you give to someone who has really everything? <laughs> the Royal Stalker Skeleton. So as recently as in 2011, a stalker's skeleton was found in St. James Park and it was thought to be there for three years before its discovery. It turned out to be corpse of Robert James Moore, who was an American, and moved to UK in 2007 and assumingly he was obsessed with the Queen. King Charles I's final walk. So King Charles had a walk around in this beautiful park on the day of his execution at 13th January 1649. Duck Island Cottage. So there is a cute as a button building at the edge of the lake. And who's ever seen it, I don't know if you ever wondered what it is. It's a Duck Island Cottage and it was built in 1837 by the Ornithological Society of London. The exotic history of the park. So James I made several changes on his ascension to the throne. He had the land drained and landscaped and changed and then he moved some crocodiles, elephants and camels in the park. The Birdcage Walk. The Birdcage Walk is the road around the park which runs along the southern side of the park and it's named after it because King James I was super obsessed with the birds and he held them in cages and a lot of exotic birds around. The Short-Lived Pagoda. So at the end of the war with France at 1814 for celebrations, a Chinese pagoda was built in the middle of the park. But in the celebrations of the opening of the pagoda, there were fireworks and stuff, so the pagoda has burnt down on its first day. <laughs> Story's Gate. So in the southeast of the park, there is a gate called Story's Gate, and it was named after Edward Story. Yep. Did you see the bird? Cutie! <laughs> so this is always happening around here, like the birds flying wildly around. I will keep on giving my information. Uh, the Story's Gate was named after Edward Story, which once was the keeper of the birds and the birdcage walk. Goodbye trees. Like the other royal parks, the St. James Park also used to hold much more heavy amounts of trees. But during the Austrian of uh, Cromwell's rule, many locals have chopped down the trees. Thank you for watching us and thank you for letting me come to St. James Park and talk about it as a job. I'll see you in the next video of Londonist. I hope you like this one. Take care.